Hi, it's Emily. I am filming from Montreal, Canada right now. I just got here because I'm going to be talking about taming imposter syndrome, how to stop feeling like a fraud. So tomorrow I'm going to be speaking to the, the women's、um, women in business group at Concordia Business School. And so in this video, I would love to make two points. About taming your imposter syndrome, because we all want to unleash the fullest potential of who we are, but、uh, you know sometimes we have voices inside of us. Oh, and by the way, in case you're wondering, I am filming from the bathroom of the Embassy Suites because this is the only room in my hotel room which actually has some decent light. So anyhow, I want to make two points about. Addressing the voices inside of you that could be coming up as you think about unleashing the greatest version of who you are, and manifesting everything that you want. First point is as you think about being in your spotlight, the spotlight is actually not about you, and I'll elaborate on that. And the second point is, in order to overcome imposter syndrome. We must do the proper inner work and self-awareness work to erase the orig origins of where those voices came from, and those voices are from the young child parts of you that are still stuck in negative emotional events from childhood, and those parts of you took on the beliefs that who do you think you are? So let's get back to the first point, and that is the spotlight. So many people that I know, when I do a lot of workshops, they ask me like, "How do you get the courage to speak in front of all of these audiences, and you don't even seem nervous?" So what I want to do is, is challenge you to reframe what the spotlight is all about. Because when I'm on stage, it's yes, they're looking at me, but the purpose of me being on stage has nothing to do with me. It has everything to do with what gets to happen to the audience when I teach them what they need to do in order for them to, in this particular case, overcoming their imposter syndrome. All of the workshops that I do have are around how to unleash your greatest self in leadership and in other parts of your life, and also especially how do you become your best self so that you could attract the best type of、uh, romantic partner possible. Because it's all the same thing. And that is, we have to own our greatness, and we cannot own that greatness until we do the inner work. And if you have a dream of speaking in front of the stage with your gifts and sharing the message that only you can uniquely deliver, it is your spiritual obligation to be on stage to share your message, because the spotlight has nothing to do with you. It has everything to do with how you get to make impact in other people's lives as a result of your gifts. So even if you're, let's say, an introverted entrepreneur that works behind a lab and you're and you're publishing all these papers about your research, well, if if you truly have a great unique gift and you have a message that could help to impact and better the world. Well, you're going to be asked to speak in front of conferences, and so you're going to be in the spotlight and on stage. The spotlight, just do that reframe. Oh, they're going to be looking at me. Am I going to be good enough? And the more you think those negative thoughts,、uh, what's going to happen is that the audience is going to sense that insecure energy, and they're not going to be able to hear your message. So do that reframe about. The universe has purposely given you a whole bunch of childhood wounds to to get you to the gifts that you are supposed to uniquely deliver. There's a famous saying: "Your deepest wound is your truest niche." For the people that haven't really done inner work yet, or gone to therapy or coaching, it's easy to put the blame on the bully, the parent, the sister, the teacher that did you wrong, and that stops you from becoming your greatest self. So when you do the self awareness work, you will realize that those wounds were purposely given to you so that you can find the treasures in those wounds, and that's the journey that I've had to travel because I've had my share of really bad childhood events, and after doing the inner work and after having suffered depression in my early forties over ten years ago, that's when I came to realize that. OMG! I had to go through all of the negative pains in my childhood in order to find my spiritual calling and my life's purpose. I had to go through 50 years.
years of life and negative experiences and also positive experiences to really own who I am. And so as when I launched into entrepreneurship, sure, I could have had, well, who do you think you are wanting to teach self-leadership and help people become their greatest self? No, it's because I had done the inner work and I know that everything that has been given to me, especially the bad events, has all been for the purpose of helping others transform their lives. And so how dare I not use the gifts that my creators have given me to share the message, write the books, and now I'm on to writing the second book. So it is my duty to be in the spotlight. And for me, I've been given the gift of being able to inspire audiences from the stage. So that's my gift. For you, the spotlight could be different. It could just be running team meetings or being a leader at work and, and whatever it is. Just think big, but when you think big, you also have to recognize what are the voices that come up. And you have to connect the dots of your life looking backwards to make a new story of why things happen to you. And when you make that new story, then you realize, oh my goodness, this is not about me. This is about this is about my spiritual duty, my moral obligation to share a message in only the unique way that I can deliver. And so it's your energy of self-leadership and believing in yourself and being in that spotlight to say, I'm here to help you. I know that you have some sort of pain that I can help. So I am here to use my magic so that your life can transform. So that's the first point. The spotlight is not about you. It's about what gets to happen to other people, your team, um, what gets to happen in your, in, at work, what gets to happen in your entrepreneurial life. It's about the, the, the gifts that you uniquely deliver to others to make their life better, to put a smile on their face. The second point I wanted to make is the origins of imposter syndrome and all those voices. Who do you think you are? I'm not smart enough. I'm not good enough. So when you think about your biggest realistic goal, you know, sometimes I ask people, oh, what is your big goal? They're like, well, I want to have $25 million so that I can travel the world. And like, well, that's nice. That's nice for 25 years down the road. Why don't we pick a realistic goal six months from now, one month from now, uh, six months from now, one year from now, five years from now, then let's work backwards. What is the goal that makes sense that you think is doable if you push outside of your comfort zone? And we need to identify as you think about being in that space of accomplishing your goal, what are the voices that come up as you're thinking about unleashing the greatest version of who you are? And so if you're thinking, oh, who do you think, uh, who do I think I am? I'm not smart enough. I'm not good enough. I'm not attractive enough. I haven't lost the weight that I need to in order to be in the spotlight. Well, those are the voices from childhood. And those are the parts of you that have experienced some sort of significant childhood event that took on the belief that it is not safe to be in the spotlight to show all of who you are. And let me give you an example. This is a client that I worked with a number of years ago, and I'll just change the little details so, so that he's not identifiable. This is somebody that uh, has many initials after his name. And so he is in the expert space, and he knew that he needed to be on stage to share what his expertise is because no one was sharing it in the way that he was translating this particular modality of um, spiritual awareness. And so we had to work on what is that part of him that is afraid to be in front of people. He just couldn't even get himself to book the talks. And so as we looked at the protective mechanism that said, no, it's not safe for you to be on stage, we traced it back to the third grade part of him that was in front of the classroom that was trying to give a report and what happened was he had a boner in front of the classroom. Yeah, I know, a third grader and he felt like everybody was watching his crotch because it was obvious. Of course, that's a very shameful moment and he took on the belief that it is not safe to be in the spotlight. So, it was actually his third grade part that was running the show. His logical brain, the present day self, his 40 something self said, come on, you have all this education experience, we need to be on stage to share this. And so we updated this protector to, uh, to, that said, we can't go on stage. We, I guided him to update this protective part of him to say, let this protective soldier know that you are no longer in third grade. 
and that you could handle it and that you're not going to have a boner when you're in front of the room. As this protector got updated, then this protector allowed him to go back into the original third grade memory of that third grade part of him that was still stuck in front of the third grade classroom. His 40-something highest self had to reparent and rescue that third grader out of the past and into the present to say, we've got this. It is safe to show who we are. I know how to control my feelings and we are not going to get sexually excited in front of an audience. And we need to be in our expert space and we need to start giving workshops. So that was the main protector that held him back from owning the spotlight. And after we worked on that, it was so beautiful to get his feedback. Like, Emily, I'm doing a workshop. Okay, right now, the first one is for five people. And then he just kept doing more and more of it because now he showed the third grader part of him. Okay, we're doing this workshop. I'm gonna show you that nothing bad is going to happen to us when we're speaking in front of the group. So as he showed this inner team of his, it's like, yeah, it's safe. And you see how everyone is reacting nicely to us and nothing is happening in our pants. So as he did the smaller workshops and it got bigger and then he started to get invited to, uh, to speak at conferences and now he is on many, many stages. And it's just so rewarding to hear these results. So whatever it is that you want to achieve, your biggest dreams, it's so important to identify the parts of you that are still stuck in, in the past, holding on to the burdens of I'm not good enough, I'm not smart enough. Now even I'm not smart enough, a lot of times many of my clients have been compared to their siblings who were smarter, prettier, more Ivy League degrees than they were. So those child parts of them were actually holding them back from stepping into their light and stepping into their greatness. So this is all about rescuing the parts of you out of the past so that you can have the courage to step into your spotlight and own your greatness and share your gifts and make impact in the world. And that's how you come to spiritual center and that's how you come home to your true self and really own your gifts, understanding how all of your, your parts are connected to what you want to unleash. You know, that's, that's a light bulb moment to help you to get out of bed in the morning, to have purpose, spiritual purpose, because at the end of the day, we all want to make a difference, not from a place of ego, but from a place of spirit. And when we're coming from a place of spirit, that's the energy that our audience buys from us. And that's when we can become inspiring and motivating and make a difference in other people's lives. So I hope that this video has been helpful to help you to understand how to tame the imposter syndrome and how to stop feeling like a fraud so number one, the spotlight is not about you. It's about the difference that you get to make in other people's lives because of your unique gifts from showing them in your spotlight. And secondly, in order to erase the imposter syndrome, you must do the proper self-awareness inner work in order to unburden you from, I'm not smart enough, I'm not good enough, who do I think I am? So that when you unburden that emotional backpack, the higher self can download new beliefs into those um, second grader, third grader, five-year-old parts of you to say, we are good enough. We were meant to be doing great things in this life.